Hello everybody, I'm Luis Juarez, otherwise known as Chago, the artistic director of Baktun 12. We're an East Salinas theater company that's been around for almost 20 years, but I've been doing this Chicano theater thing for a little bit longer than that. Chicano theater meaning that this is the type of style of theater that I do, I apply to the type of work that we are creating and producing, which is basically documentary theater. Uh, documentary theater, you, you know, just by the name, the sound of it, you already kind of understand what it is, you know. We're, we're taking something from the real life and putting it on stage. Uh, in our case, in our approach, we're taking something from our East Salinas life and putting it on stage. In about 2000, around 2009, I was living in Oakland, spent like about 10 years pretty much living in Oakland. and there was this grant that came up for folks that were interested in doing stories about Californians. And I thought, wow, that'd be a great opportunity to capture some stories about my neighborhood, my neighborhood being East Salinas. Now, back around 2009, 2010, um, even up until now, if you put together those two words, East Salinas, and you Google them, you're most likely going to find stories that focus on violence gangs, undocumented uh, inequities, you know, just, just a lot of stories that are going to paint a picture that are not controlled by the people who they're about. A lot of times they're controlled by people who uh, probably don't really have that much of a relationship with the residents of East Salinas. Now, East Salinas is you know, they'll tell you, you'll hear statistics about eh, about 60,000 plus around there. Uh, but really, like East Salinas, uh, especially between the months of March and October, that, that number goes up to about 80,000, maybe even 100. And I know some of you know what I'm talking about because that population is coming in to do the work that nobody wants to do. That's the farm work. That's that hard work. That's that backbreaking work. That's that work that brought my father over here in 1951 as a bracero to work these fields that were left vacant by soldiers that went off to fight in World War II. Now, I say 1951, but you're saying, well, wasn't World War II in the 1940s? Yeah, it was. That's when the bracero program started. World War II ended around 1945. So why did it keep on going? Because there were some folks that knew that they had something really good going on here with this labor that was coming in from Mexico. That, that program kept going to 1964. And in many ways, it kept going and going and going, whether there was a program or not. This is, a, this is some of that story that we don't get to hear or talk about. Uh, but when we do our research, we find out that, you know, you look at countries, the countries that, that were at war with uh, the U.S. And, and the allied forces, you know, uh, uh, Germany and, and uh, I believe Russia, you know, the Soviet Union at the time. You look at, uh, you look at those other countries, the countries that the Axis powers, you know, Japan, Italy, Germany. And then you, you kind of look at, well, what was, the, what was the advantage the United States had? You know, I mean, they were all pretty much, all these countries all had about the same amount of firepower to an extent, right? The U.S. did come in with the, the atom bomb. They were able to, that was able to give them the edge uh, that they were searching for. But a lot of these countries didn't have a substitute workforce that, that came in and relieved the workforce that went off to fight in the war. So what I'm saying is that there were no braceros <laughs> that, that went into to Germany. There were no braceros that went into work uh, in Japan. There were no braceros that worked in Italy. You know, but we had braceros that came from Mexico. My father came from Zacatecas, Valparaiso, Zacatecas. And he came because he knew that there was opportunity here. And he did that along with a lot of other, a lot of other fathers, a lot of other abuelos, a lot of other uh, bisabuelos, grandfathers and great-grandfathers. Now, uh, let me pull back here. Let me go back to this story about 
the, uh, the first documentary theater project that we got into back in 2009, that we started doing this research. And 2009, 2010, 2011 comes around, and we collected 40, 40 interviews, 40 interviews of people from the east side, from the Alasau, and not just Mexicano, we're talking Italian Americans, black Americans, Filipino Americans, and Okies, the farm labor force that came from the Midwest during the 20s, the 30s, the 30s and the 40s, uh, that farm labor force that John Steinbeck native son of this town here, Salinas, uh, you know, they, a lot of them lived, a lot of them, that was, that was their place, the Alasau. So here I am, I'm learning this, this history, I'm learning this history about all these folks, and I'm also learning about the history of our folks, Mexicano, Chicano, and the contributions, the stories that were coming out, like, it was, it was just exciting, just me thinking about it right now, I'm just getting excited, and you guys are all probably thinking like, wow, why is he so excited? <laughs> because I had a chance to learn about my neighbors, my East Salinas neighbors, who a lot of times get the worst rap. It's unfair. And, I mean, we get it from people from the outside, we get it from people who, who used to live there, and, and the first thing they'll say, you go to Facebook, you go to these blogs, they'll write, they'll say, like, oh yeah, it, was, it used to be a great place, it was this, it was that, you know? But it's a great place now, man. It's the home that subsidizes the farm labor force of a nine billion dollar, I say nine billion, some people will say eight billion, some people will like shortchange it, but the Salinas Valley agricultural like, uh, industry, it's pretty strong, man, it's pretty robust. And you know, our farm labor force, our, our families are the ones that provide that, that labor. So in this project, this first project that we got into, this first documentary theater project, I find out that this is the value of, of this neighborhood. It's working class, you know? It's, it's unsung, it's, it's unheard of, you know, a lot of these champions, a lot of these, uh, a lot of these folks that became successful in, in art, in, in, in education, in, in athletics, Joe Cap being one of them. Uh, we, didn't get to we didn't get to interview Joe Cap, but we interviewed people who grew up around Joe Cap. Who's Joe Cap? Some of you might know who Joe Cap is, um, and maybe some of you all out there will be able to do your own research around Joe Cap. But uh, probably one of the one of our greatest athletes that, that came out of out of East Salinas. Uh, you know, it's I, and I'll just I just want to share this tidbit from what was passed down to me in these interviews. That this this young man, or the, at, the, at the time he was just he was just a, a kid, and he was going to El Cicel Junior High when he used to be a junior high, not a middle school. They took him on a field trip up to Cal Berkeley, and there he was. He, he, just, he just became enamored with this institution. He, he decided right then and there he wanted to play football for UC Berkeley, and that's what he did. He went on to play football for UC Berkeley. He was the one who took the team, the, the only time that Cal Berkeley ever went to the Rose Bowl he took them there, uh, early 50s, I believe, late 40s, early 50s. After that, he got drafted into the Canadian uh, Football League, and he took his teams to their version of the Super Bowl. After that, he got drafted into the NFL, and he took, I think, I, 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 I want to say, I'm not going to say, but he did take his team to the Super Bowl. Um, later, later on, he came on to, uh, he got on the cover of Sports Illustrated in 1971. And on the title of that, of that Sports Illustrated page, it said, the toughest Chicano. Now, this is a kid who went to El Cicel, El Cicel Middle School, you know? And I'm thinking like, I'm thinking to myself like, what is the value of a story like that? What, what kind of impact can a story like that have on a lot of our youth? 
I mean, to know that somebody from that school, from the same school that they went to, went on to, to do some great, amazing things in the foot, on a football field. And then after, after his professional career as a football player, goes on to become a coach for Cal Berkeley and orchestrates the greatest play of all time. Maybe some of you will be able to take a chance to, to Google that one too against Stanford in the early 80s. A legend, a legend. There was another legend named Larry Hosford, musician. He has this great song about Salinas. And he himself, an Oki, an Alisa Oki. You know, I had a chance to sit with him and talk to him at his home on Orchard Street. And now, if any of you know where Orchard Street is at, it's one of the, it's one of the most, like, I guess, hot streets in the east side. And the man just still lives there. He has, I think he has two Model T Fords in his garage. You know, and, and there he was sharing stories about, about the old barn where there used to be, there used to be a church. They used to have church services there. There used to be a roller rink where they used to have concerts where big name country and rock and roll acts would come and perform there. Um, Loretta Lynn, the Smothers Brothers, and Johnny Cash. Yeah, Johnny Cash, right? And where was this barn at? Well, this barn is located where now Cesar Chavez Library sits today. All right, so, you know, I, I, there I am. I'm receiving this information for the first time, and I'm, you know, I'm living in Oakland, and I'm thinking, like, wow, you know, this is, this is, this, there's just so much more that needs to be done. And eventually, things changed for me. My wife and I, we moved back down over here. Actually, we moved to San Jose, but I'm still working here now. I started doing more and more work here through an initiative, Building Healthy Communities. The Building Healthy Communities initiative that is designed to uplift communities, about 14 communities around the state of California. East Salinas being one of these 14 communities. Okay, because because of, well, you could look at the numbers. You know, we have so many people there. And, and for those of you who know, how long does it take for us to get from downtown Salinas to the east side uh, during traffic hours, during, during peak traffic hours? Could take up to about half an hour, you know, to clear about, what, maybe three, four, or five miles? You know, it's kind, of, it's kind of intense. So, you know, taking into these, like, all these numbers into consideration, um, and what are we doing about it? What can be, what can be done about it uh, besides just using the normal, uh, uh, the traditional outlets that, that we go to for, these type, for this type of help? Well, this initiative brought together organizations working in education, working with youth, working in health, working in justice reform, and working in the arts. That's where we came in, and through them, we were able to we were able to continue this work and do a story called a play called Stories at Costa Plaza. You know, and in that research, we find out again we some more information that just kind of blew our mind. Uh, from 1999 to the year 2012, about a, a 250 articles were written. 250 news stories were produced about a Costa Plaza. Acosta Plaza being a small housing community of townhouses in East Salinas with a reputation. Now, of these 250 stories, only 10 of them were positive. So you think about it. You know, if you're being told, constantly being told and reminded that you are what is being perceived of you from the outside of your neighborhood, and you start believing that, you know, it starts having an impact. I mean, it ultimately does have an impact. And that's what you carry with. So we went and did, we started doing uh, documentary theater work around that. In, that. in that project, we were able, I was able to discover so many things. Um, but one story that stood out to me was 
was a, a story of a young black man graduated from Alsa High School in 1996. And his life, he overcame so many challenges, so many obstacles, uh, that he was able to achieve his dream and goal. Today that man is, is practicing law in the city of Manhattan, or in the, in the, in the, the borough of Manhattan in New York City. All right, so a long way, a long way from, long way from uh, where, where he started from, uh, but, but a story worth telling, worth taking that time to share with the community. After that, we got into the Bracero story. Mi abuelito fue Bracero. Like I said earlier, uh, a lot of us are actual descendants of Braceros. Uh, a lot of us are like, um, who are first, second, third generation, have family members that were, or fathers, or even, even mothers and grandmothers, uh, aunts, that worked in the fields as Braceros during that time between 1942 and 1964. After all of that, um, I was able to, I was blessed with one last project and oh, we have a lot more projects actually. We have a queue of them, right? But the last one that we were able to get into, uh, this which actually happened to fall around the time of the canonization of Father Junipero Serra was the story of the Esalen Indians of here, of the Monterey Bay. Native Americans, descendants of the original people of this land. You know, that is probably one of the, like, one of the more important stories for us right now. Um, in about a year's time, I was introduced to the project, introduced to the tribal chairwoman, Luis J. Miranda Ramirez, who shared so much with us. It was, uh, it was an incredible amount of story, and within that time, we were able to create a script and share it, do a reading of it at Cal State University of Monterey Bay last November. Very timely and very exciting to see what's going to happen uh, with that project and all these other projects that we're going to get into in the spring. The end of the, towards the end of the school year, uh, we have young people from, young students from Virginia Rocker Barton about to create a play about Virginia Rocker Barton and we're creating a project that's going to that's designed to get our East Salinas residents and residents uh, beyond East Salinas to register and vote because this is 2016 and it's time for us to participate. Thank you very much everybody. You were a great audience. I hope to see you all soon at some of our shows. Please look us up online www.boxing12.org. <laughs>